Hi, my name is Ramya, like Sandeep mentioned. Uh, good morning to you. I don't know how many of you are morning people. It's 8.30 in the Friday morning, so please, please grab your coffee so um, you can stay awake. I like talking a lot, so definitely get coffee so you can stay awake. Um, so when Anand reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to talk about procrastination? Um, I laughed out loud, okay, like LOL, actual LOL, because I thought he was joking. And then I realized he wasn't joking. And that was even funnier, right? Because why is someone asking me to talk about this topic? Like of all the things people would talk about, why me and why this? Um, but the more that I sat with it, I realized this is actually perfect for me. Because if you know me on Instagram at all, uh, and even if you don't, don't know me, I know um, I do a lot of things. And they're all things that I procrastinate on that turn into amazing projects, that turn into clients, that turn into basically my entire career. So what I want to show you guys today, um, disclaimer before that, if you came here thinking she's going to show us how to stop procrastinating, you should probably leave right now because that's not what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to make procrastination your best friend, okay? Not going away. She's still going to be there. So how can you actually learn to coexist um, with this person? And like someone mentioned um, in the chat, definitely turn on your video um, if you're comfortable. Um, I had to look human today after a whole year and like show up here. So I want you to feel the pain with me. Okay. So I'm going to go through a set of slides, but before then, uh, let's play a little game. And if you've come here from my Instagram profile, this will probably be pretty easy for you, but um, play along. Okay. Like let's actually um, see if other people on here get it. All right. So I'm going to try to fumble my way through this technology. Bear with me one second. How do we use Zoom in like over a year? Like I said, um, let me do a share of content, Google Drive. Hopefully, this thing works. Okay, yes, let's play a game. Um, how do I go to the next slide? Yeah. See, this is why I'm not good at this. Ah, oh, good. Okay, so I'm going to show you three images on here. Okay, and uh, this is basically uh, a game that we've been playing on Instagram for the last weekend, or like three weekends actually. And this is. Um, designed to let you look at your surroundings a little bit better, okay? So we've already established according to the manifesto, and I believe this as well, everyone is creative. So for us to be creative, we have to be able to look at things differently, right? Like that's where, that's the perspective change that makes us creative people. So let's play a little bit of a game around that. So these three images here, um, what do you think of when you look at this? And this is an example, okay? So don't freak out too much. So when I look at these three images together um, and want to describe it using one adjective, right? I might look at this and say, oh, it's something beautiful, right? Or it's something blue, um, very clearly. Uh, it's something pretty close up, right? Uh, it's something magical because they all look really different and magical in their own capacity. Now, if you were looking at just a sea or just a painting or a mural that was painted on a pillar, Maybe these are not things that you would think of unless you spend a couple of minutes to look at it, right? So that's kind of what I want you guys to do today with this game. And so we're going to go, because I've given you the example, I'm going to now give you a test, right? This is the game part of it. If I showed you these three images and asked you to um, describe it using one word, right? Any word, and you can go multiple times as well, something blank, what would you describe these images as? And if you have an answer, put it in the chat because I want to see what you think. Okay, if you see these three images, what comes to mind? Okay, reflection, awesome. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. Anything else that comes to mind for any of you? Okay, they're all, <laughs> they all have varying shades of gray. That's awesome. They're all fluid. Oh, they're all inverted. Yes, the reflection part. <laughs> they're all neat. Dishes are neat. Okay, I'll take it. Um, but yeah, so this is this is the kind of exercise. Um, yes, we'll talk about that one chat there, the place stars in a second. But this is a kind of um, intentional looking around that we sometimes miss in our life, right? So I'm going to talk about why this is important in a little bit. But let's do one more of these, okay? So now, what are these three images reminding you of? What do you think is one objective that you can um, use to describe these three images? Something blank. This one's a little tough, right? Yep, they're all square. Anything else? Some sort of square, right? Okay, mouth is an interesting suggestion. <laughs> because, I mean, I get it. Some people do bite their nails, so it makes sense. If everything looks like a little bit of mouth, I guess. Wow, I didn't even think of this. 
This is awesome. Okay, yes. Yeah. So this was uh, these were actually challenges we played over the weekend on my Instagram account. Um, so the first one was for people to go out and find something blue. Uh, the second was to go out and find something reflective. And yeah, obviously, you know, people that needed to stay indoors and safe had to do it. So we have some indoor pictures here as well. Um, and then we did the last one was something squarish. This weekend, we actually have another one going. Uh, and that is to find something symmetrical. So if you find something symmetrical today, definitely find me on Instagram and send that picture to me because we want to see um, all the different symmetrical things. And I promise you, once you've done this exercise, you're going to notice things a lot better um, outside. Okay, so let's play one more game. So this picture that you see on here, hopefully you can see. Um, can you find me something that's hanging? in this picture and how many ever is fine just like whatever you think um qualifies for something hanging can you send that over to me hats is one yes very apparent you can see um four different hats in there yep you can see coats in there awesome you can see hangers there's a bag that's hanging there's a tote bag yep yep awesome other bags are hanging too yep Awesome. Okay. So now the same thing. Yep. And there's a climber there. Oh, that's a fantastic shot. Yeah. There's a climber there that's also technically hanging. Um, yep. The branch is hanging from which the hanger is also hanging. Um, getting better there. Hanging light. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, there's a bulb. See, this is what I'm talking about. When you start to actually intentionally look around for stuff, there's so much thing, uh, like so many things you can find that you just hadn't thought about before, right? Okay, second thing, and I'm only going to give you like five seconds to do this because you're you're all already fast. Uh, find me something with legs, okay? Five seconds, go. Five, four, three, two, two point something, 1.75. Awesome, one, yeah, okay, so um, brilliant, right? So we had a, a few uh, obvious choices. If you look at this, you've got like all the furniture there, some benches, tables, the little, um, shelf thingy that's over there. Uh, but someone also said human. Do you see that woman that's in the picture like uh, beyond that window? She has legs, right? So um, this is kind of the creative exercise that I typically do these days is when I look around and sometimes uh, we're just at home, we're bored, we've been home for over a year um, and we don't want to step out because even if it was only a fever, why would you want a fever for seven days, right? So um, if you're just inside and you don't have anything to do, you've like watched all of the Netflix shows in the world, this is a good exercise for you to do. So just pick an objective, look around your room, look out your window, um, go to the next room and uh, torture your sibling like my brother does to me. But anything that you do, uh, see if you can pick one objective and look around in the room and see if you can find five things, right? Like set yourself a limit and see if um, that works. So hopefully that woke you up, even if your coffee didn't. Um, so we should be able to get into the talk. Um, so let me talk about just what, um, the topic was in the brief that was given to me, right? So I was supposed to talk about procrastination. And like Sandeep mentioned, um, it's not always a bad word. It's um, it's a good thing sometimes, right? Because it can actually push you to sort of panic a little bit more and put constraints around your creativity. So remember when I told you guys during this exercise, I said, you have five seconds, go, right? Like find something that has legs. Um, you're not thinking about, I want to give out the most interesting one. You're not thinking about, oh, she needs to think I'm so cool at this. So I'm going to wait and find three different things, right? You actually went like pretty quick and you came up with something that seemed like the best option to you at that point. And usually creative people who are super perfectionists, we need this. We need the panic. We need to be able to get to the last minute. We need to be able to say, I only have five minutes to do this. What am I going to do, right? Like bomb diffuser situation. I want to be able to cut the right wire. So um, I look at procrastination as something that you don't have to feel guilty about. And I'm going to show you how to turn um, this guilt into gold. Right? But before that, I have to show you who I am and why I'm the best person for this talk. So let's get into that a little bit. And anytime you guys have questions, throw that in the chat. Um, I won't look at it because I'm super cool. But one of the moderators will look at it and let me know if they need to stop me. If these are questions we can hold on until the very end, then we're going to do that because it's going to be a little um, Q&A session at the end. All right. So um, I am a lettering artist and writer. My name is Ramya Balaji, and I go by the artist name arbitrarily. Um, reason one, because my initials are RB and it just seemed like a cool title at the time. Now I have all the domain names and the handles and everything, so I'm sticking with it. But also too, um, I don't do things that are super focused um, and it's just arbitrary. It's just all over the place. So it seemed like 
okay, instead of calling myself coffee, which would be a lot more appropriate for how much I love coffee, let's go with arbitrary as the name, right? So that's who I am. I make um, content with letters. So just some examples. And yes, that is an actual snake in a mug over there. I went to the Amazon and decided to sketch in the middle of all that um, beauty. Uh, I make content, like I travel outside, I write um, on pen, on paper, on walls, uh, with marshmallows, uh, like this thing here. Again, coffee, right? Like it always shows up. Um, I do uh, tactile lettering, which is basically letters using things that are not pen and paper. So using things um, pretty much that you can touch. So this is a, a spread I made uh, when I think BLM was going on and needed to uh, just cathartically just talk about what I felt. And so this was unlearning everything and that is pencil shavings and you're starting from the beginning. Um, and like Sandeep mentioned, I also do murals on the right of UC. Um, these are some of the murals I've done. I make products. So that is a very, uh, the first thing that I made as an artist, actually. It's an enamel pen that says, don't put kanna, um, because it felt like I needed it. You know, I needed like a, an Indian version of Indian, uh, like good vibes only, and this is the best that I could do. Um, I also make products. We made the Not A Planner. If you know me from Instagram at all, you know how much I marketed this thing, how much I talked about it. So this shouldn't be new to you. Uh, and then our newest product, Place Cards, which is similar to the exercise we did in the beginning. I'm gonna talk about this in the end as well. Okay. Uh, now I'm not an artist. Like if you look at this, like I'm an artist now, but I didn't go to like art school for it, right? I didn't go to art school. I didn't go to like visual communication school or anything. Um, my sketching stopped in like nine standard when every middle class Indian parent says, it's your 10th votes, like you're not supposed to draw, right? So that's where it stopped. And then she said, oh, when you're done with 12th, you can draw. When you go to college, you can draw. When you get a job, you can draw. When you get married, you can draw. I'm still not married. So <laughs> I was like, okay, let me just start drawing. So this is my journey, right? But to understand where I'm actually coming from um, or how things uh, made me into an artist, we're gonna start the story in 2017, okay? So back in the middle of 2017, I am working in tech because I had the middle-class Indian uh, family starter pack. So I went to engineering then I went to get my master's and I was a technical project manager for a healthcare company in the US, um, almost a decade. So if you see slight differences in my accent, and that's probably why. Um, but in 2017, I was working in tech, uh, super bored with what I was doing, and I needed a way to just have fun, right? So I started writing. I used to write when I was younger, and I thought, oh, I should be a blogger. Like, this is an awesome idea. I'm so funny. Everyone should know what I'm, um, how funny I am. Bad idea, but I did blog. And at the time, one of my friends from work, um, she was leaving work to go study, and she wanted to get um, a gift, like a personal gift for all the people she liked on the team. So she looked at me and she was like, uh, so you do these blogs and they're like little stick figures with sketches on there. So I guess you write and you draw. So I'm gonna give you a calligraphy set so you can do both, like you can write and you can draw, you know, bye. Um, and that like started an obsession, right? I had this tool with me, all my meetings were boring. So I filled up uh, like 500 pages, like an entire ream of paper, which is this. I just kept writing A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. I hadn't even written this much A, B, C, D, like when I was in MKG, I think, but this actually happened. And after a while, I got so obsessed and I got, couldn't think of anything else um, that I absolutely needed, right? Like absolutely needed to do this as a career, okay? Um, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I wanted to find out if people would pay me. Honestly, that was it. If people would pay me for my art. And because I was in the US on a work visa, um, it wasn't possible to test that theory out because you're not allowed to make any money outside of the job that you're doing. So I did the only smart, rational thing that anybody in the situation would do. I decided to pack my bags and quit my job. So I got a t-shirt, a white t-shirt and a fabric marker. And this is a true story. <laughs> and I wrote the most Madras thing I could think of from 10 years ago. And the shirt says, right? which is because when I went into immigration, <laughs> Um, I needed the person there to have a smile on their face, right? Like in Chennai immigration, if they look at my shirt, I wanted them to smile. So I wrote this thing, I packed my bags and I came all the way from New York City, JFK International Airport to MAA, Chennai Managram, right? So uh, I came here and I was um, at home, huge disappointment to my parents because I came back after 10 years in the US. I was almost 30 years unmarried. Uh, so my mom makes this filter coffee and she's like talking to me about how much of a disappointment I am. And I'm okay with that. Uh, so I'm drinking the filter coffee and I'm thinking, okay, I am a lifelong procrastinator, right? So I've always procrastinated, right? From last minute study for exams to um, even at work, even though I was a project manager, my emails would always go out last minute. I always wrote them last minute. So I'm sitting there sipping my filter coffee and thinking, wait, I am a very last minute person. 
Um, and now I've chosen a career where there are no deadlines. I make my own deadlines. And like every matrimony match that my mom has showed me before, it's not a good match. It is just not. Like, how can these two be together, right? Like last minute and not having a deadline. How can, how can that work? Because see, I am a project manager, right? Like I know how projects work. So I know projects work like this, right? You start in the beginning, you plan what you're supposed to do. You go out there, you research, you brainstorm, then you actually do it like Nike, you just do it, right? Like execute it. And then you fine tune it, package it. And at the end, like everyone's happy, someone's made money, someone's got value, this is all good. But, and you will probably um, recognize this pattern if you are also a creative, um, if you're also a creative person, is my projects actually go like this. I start my projects, bunch of ideas, I'm super excited. This is the best thing ever the world is gonna see. Uh, I am the best person ever, right? So excited, start working, and then I'm bored. So I start procrastinating. And that is usually how long it takes me to procrastinate and how many things I go to. I'm going to YouTube, I'm returning calls, making up a new hobby. I'm like trying to figure out how to make a recipe from scratch. Um, I'm stalking people on FB. There are still some people on FB, by the way. Um, and then in the very last minute, like I've got a lot of panic and a lot of caffeine. And that is the only way my projects work, right? So this is obviously, um, a, to me, at least at the time, it's very apparent that this is a very negative situation, right? Because if, if I could clear out the little um, mess of headphones and room over there, if I can clear that out, and if I only needed that tiny bit of time right, to actually make my ideas work, can you imagine how awesome that would be? Can you imagine, like I would actually be, you know, 30 under 30, who knows? Like not anymore, because I'm not 20s anymore, but I could have been, right? I could have been 30 under 30. So in my mind, if there was no procrastination, then I could get success, right? Actually, the kind of blue tick success, man, like I could be minting NFTs, 34, $35 million, who knows? It was only because of procrastinating. I was so bad at what I was doing, right? Not true, right? Because, um, I started thinking about this a lot more. It was very negative. I didn't even have a plan. I didn't have a project. I was going to be an artist and artists still don't make money, okay? Like the starving artist thing is still true. We have just decided to call it diet culture. So we're still starving. It's just, we don't call it that anymore, right? So what was I doing? Like, why am I um, this person? Why cannot I, you know, just tell myself, like people say, calm down. Why can't I just tell myself, don't procrastinate? And then why the power invested in me, like I would just be okay, right? Like, but that is not true. And so I started thinking uh, the way that people that have periods think about their period, right? It's there, it's gonna show up every month. What are you gonna do? Just learn to live with it. So, you know, like if I got my period, I would get some chocolate, watch some key drama, complain about it on Instagram, by the way, and be done with it, right? So what if I could do the same thing with procrastination? What if I could be like, yo, hi, What's up? Like, let's figure this out. What if we could be best friends? And then you realize when you are best friends with your procrastination, right? Because that is just you trying to have fun and not doing the thing you're supposed to be doing. Um, and if you pay attention to it, you realize that there's actually a, a gold mine of information that procrastination can give you, right? And this is one of my favorite quotes. The work you do while you procrastinate is probably the work you should be doing for the rest of your life. Now, full disclaimer, any sentiment you want to share with anybody, you could probably go to the internet and find the perfect quote that makes your case for you. So you don't have to necessarily believe that this is true. But this was actually one of the things that changed the way that I looked at things. I thought, okay, if I could just be doing this fun thing for the rest of my life, the only thing I need to figure out now is how do I make money from this, right? Because again, I have to be able to afford my coffee. Um, so this is why I start looking at um, procrastination differently. And like I said, when you and procrastination are best friends, okay, you can actually turn this like guiltful, shameful thing that you have into a lot of gold. And if you don't believe how much I procrastinate, when I made this sketch, I went and typed gold in Google. And I now know that the gold price today is 11 rupees less than what it was yesterday. So if you are looking to buy some gold, please go and buy some, okay? Anyway, so this gold mine of information, right? You are procrastinating and you just turn and look at it and be like, okay, fine, like, yeah, what do you want? You can actually tell a lot. So the first thing is how it helps um, your end project. And this is something, something that somebody covered in the beginning of the talk is you have a lot more, um, what's the word for it? Like a lot more um, juice left in you, right? Like you, uh, you're very creative. You kind of want to make things 
happen um, last minute, you're panicking, you have to get it done. And so there's a lot more creativity that comes in, right? There's also a lot less perfectionism that comes in, like we saw with that timed exercise we did in the beginning. You only have five minutes, like how, how much more are you going to improve this thing you're doing? It's fine, like just be with the way it is and it still is going to be one of the best things you've created, right? So for, from a creation standpoint, it's okay to procrastinate because the end result is going to be the end result no matter what. Uh, and I know I'm going like super fast, so I'm gonna try. But yeah, just send me a note on chat if I have. This is just how I talk, I'm sorry. <laughs> I move my hands around a lot and then my like voice has to keep up with my hands. Um, okay, I will, I will try to slow down. So with um, procrastination, if you were looking at it, right, not just from a creation standpoint, it can actually tell you a lot about who you are as a creator. And this doesn't mean that you have to be an artist, you have to be an influencer on Instagram with a blue tick in order for this to apply to you. You could be working in tech, right? You could be working on something else um, that is not technically a creative field. And that's okay, this should still work for you because if you understand why you're procrastinating, it can actually tell you what are the things you are avoiding? Like, why are you procrastinating now? Are you afraid that the end product is not going to be good? Are you not liking the project that you're on? So does it seem as fun? There's actually a lot that can help you real time in the real world right now, if you looked at that information that procrastination was presenting to you. And I know this is this feel like, oh, she's just like put up a sketch and she's saying some big words and why should we believe her? So today I actually want to share um, four little stories from my timeline, from my timeline as an artist, and um, show you how I've taken in some tips about procrastinating well and how that's actually turned into something I've been able to uh, use in my career. And when we say career again, it just started like in 2018, right? So we have... Um, um, like in the last two, three years. So this should be pretty relevant for you. So the first thing I want to talk about is how um, I procrastinated from mindless scrolling. okay? So all I did was um, I was a calligraphy teacher, but this was back in 2019. Um, yeah, end of 2019, December, when we didn't know that 2020 was going to be such a wonderful year. So um, I was uh, in Bangalore, I was prepping for a calligraphy workshop. And um, as usual, I was procrastinating. So I did what every normal procrastinator does. I picked up my phone and I was just scrolling through it, right? So I was just um, going through all the uh, posts on there, liking people's um, feed and, and commenting and things like that. And one of the ads that popped up was for a planner. So this was in December. So it makes sense that I was getting planner ads. Um, would have been fine if I just scrolled past it and went to the next one. But what I decided to do was go down a rabbit hole as like, oh, one planet ad, let's see who they are and what they're doing. And then you go to the little like down arrow on someone's profile and it shows you similar profiles. And I started looking at all the similar planners in there and what they were doing. And one of the things I'd noticed, which I didn't know at the time, right? I, I was just taking in information. I didn't know what to do with it. Um, I noticed that everything had like floral patterns on it. People were super happy with planners. And I'm not a very happy person. Like I'm usually just like 90% tired and 10% happy. So why like I didn't feel like getting one of those not that I was a planner but it just didn't appeal to me and I used to think there must be some like emo kid out there making planners for emo people right like that's the kind of product that I would buy but whatever fine I'll just get back to my work now and I will start prepping for my workshop because the first step and the first thing that happens when you decide um, it's okay if I'm procrastinating is you look um, at your procrastination time and you say oh brain you want to play okay let's play and the minute you say that, like teenage romance, there's no excitement anymore, okay? Because you're allowed to procrastinate. Your brain is like, ah, oh, fine, I get it. You know, instead of two hours of procrastination, you probably brought it down to one hour. And this is something that's consistently been reducing. Like the time I'm procrastinating has been consistently reducing the second I say it's okay to procrastinate. So that's how I got into uh, the ads and going down the rabbit hole and actually being able to come back. Now, Around the same time, um, and yeah, uh, in the chat, somebody just did a great job of um, taking everything I'm rambling about and putting it into one thing, right? So allow yourself to procrastinate because all the input you're getting right now, you don't know when you'll use it later, right? As a creative person, all we're doing is connecting dots in a different way. So only if we have a lot of dots can we actually connect them differently, right? So um, if you only have two dots and 
two people are in the room, they're all going to draw the same line. But imagine having 25 dots. You could draw a whole column around it, right? And different columns in, in that. Um, so you want to have a bunch of dots. And all these dots could come from the input you're giving your brain when you're procrastinating. Now, you might ask, okay, fine. You did mindless scrolling. What did that actually lead to? So I got a call around the same time in December from one of my friends, Vina, who runs Everwoods and was one of the people who um, boosted zero waste weddings uh, in India because hers was one and that went viral. So she called me because she was procrastinating, by the way, on applying to schools in Germany. And she called me and she said, look, there's a company that wants to do like journals for their employees. Are you interested? Do you want to try it? And I said, well, I just saw a bunch of planner ads. I guess I could. Like, I know what's in the market, right? All this competitive intel that nobody asked for. Maybe I could use this for this project that she's talking about. Now, in the middle of it, um, the company dropped out. And so we decided, okay, we've done all this research. Could we just go make our own product? So literally from all that market research I had done, when I didn't even know I was going to make stationary products or a planner ever, I never thought that this is what I must do. I would do. Um, we actually came up with, our first planner in 2020. It was called the Straightforward Planner for the Straightforward Planner. And like you can see, it is super minimal. It had only the bare bones, um, wasn't any of the extra toxic positivity or like super gratefulness or um, all the chaos that comes with sometimes floral patterns. It works well for people that love it, but I didn't. So I wanted to pretty much make a planner for myself. So we started with the Straightforward Planner, very moderate success because we launched it in February. Um, you have to launch planners in October, actually. Um, so it was moderate success, but we knew that if we could do this, we could do something better the next year, right? So the next year, and these are just some pictures with the planner, the next year, we came up with our um, best-selling product to date. This was the planner for 2021. And imagine the kind of situation we were in in 2020, right? We are trying to um, we're trying to make a planner, and this was in like September of 2020. We're trying to make a planner. This has been such a terrible year. Nobody wants to plan because anything someone has planned has been canceled, right? All of 2020, imagine how many trips you canceled, how many vacations you couldn't go to, how many friends you couldn't see. So it felt really stupid, in fact, to make a planner, right? And to market it as a planner to say, uh, yeah, go ahead, plan things. Like it wasn't us, we didn't feel it. So even though we knew we had a product and we knew, <laughs> um, yeah, canceled plans, yes. Uh, so even though we knew we had a good product, we could kind of repurpose and make better, even though we knew people might want planners, how were we going to market this? You know, how do you go out there and say, hey, people are dying, but, you know, look at this planner. Like, it's it's not something that we wanted to do, didn't know how to deal with it. And then we thought, why not call it? This is not a planner. And we focus less on the planning part because clearly plans went to shit, right? And could we focus more on the doing part of it? So the planner itself has, um, I'm gonna come back to this one in a bit, but the planner itself has like a bunch of activities you can do apart from like the calendar um, uh, pages for your planning. Um, but it also came with like um, actual pencils and letters and envelopes and prompts for you to write letters to people. So it wasn't just a planner, it was a lot of things, but we needed one line as good copy to tell people what this was. And what we came up with was this is not a planner. And it was such a good name for us, especially because there was so much marketing we could build around it, so many good campaigns. People loved that it was called that. Um, it was funny. Uh, even if it's cringe for other people, it was funny for the people that uh, were in the same community as us. And so it was just a lot of fun. And you might ask, oh my God, Ramay, you're so genius. You came up with, this is not a planner. It's just such a cool idea. And yes, I am super genius and I would like to take credit for it. But you know where this idea actually came from? From mindless scrolling before, okay? So this is actually a play on this particular famous painting, if you've seen it before. And this is a painting by a Belgian artist, uh, René Magritte, I think their name was. And they basically painted, uh, this is an oil painting. They painted a pipe. And underneath that, in French, they've written, this is not a pipe. Now, they were talking about, like, the illusion of painting and a bunch of other, like, super um, different plane of intelligence kind of things. But I found this, right? A few years ago, it's not even like something recent that I found. Like in one of my mindless clothings, I was following a fashion account which was calling out a brand for copying another brand. So naturally, as a procrastinator, I went and looked at that brand and then I followed all the products that they were making. One of the products was a t-shirt that had this picture on it. I was curious, so I typed the exact French phrase into Google, which took me to this particular painting. I read up about it and then forgot about it for three years until we had to make this is not a planner, right? So the first rule uh, or the first tip that I have for you from procrastination is just let it happen. It's okay. 
just think about it as input, as inspiration, as the little dots you're collecting now. You never know how you're going to connect them later. You never know what it's going to give you um, later on, right? So that is uh, what you want to do when you're thinking about procrastination is look at it mindfully, look at it intentionally and do it um, for some sort of future use. That's tip number one. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, having fun as well. So you don't just want to be getting inspiration when you're procrastinating. You also want to have fun. And this is where um, my next income stream actually comes into play. So we're going to talk about how I procrastinated with paint. Now, the story um, happens somewhere again in like late 2018. I'm on my way to Goa for a trip, uh, for a conference actually. But honestly, because it was Goa, I wanted to go there. Uh, and my connecting flight is to Mumbai. And I'm sitting with my, um, uh, I'm sitting on the flight to Mumbai, right? And in front of me, there's this woman that comes and sits and I've seen her somewhere and I don't know who she is, but, but like I'm staring at her for 10 minutes straight, like through those little spaces between the seats. I'm trying to figure out who she is. And then I realize as the plane takes off, she is my high school teacher. I haven't seen her since high school. Um, and I just said, hi, hi, Ram. Like, this is Ramya. I don't know if you remember me. I used to be this like, um, uh, not quiet girl in the class. Uh, and she's like, yeah, yeah, I remember you. You look so different now. Like, Obviously, I have more money now. Uh, so I look different. So uh, so I was talking to her and I was like, can I come say hi to you? Um, and my thought was, I'm going to talk to her about my book that I've written. And I will talk about the book in the end. I'm going to talk to her about the book that I've written. And maybe she will let me, um, you know, put the book in the library, right? How awesome would that be if kids were reading my book? So I went in to speak to her uh, the next week. And I was as I was walking, um, I noticed walls, right? Like the shared wall, the compound wall of the school. They were kind of tiny. They were like maybe six feet by, um, I don't know, another six or eight feet, right? Like each section of the wall. And I thought to myself, I'm bored um, of just doing pen and paper and calligraphy. What if I could actually do calligraphy or lettering on the wall? You know, like how awesome would that be? Wouldn't that be fun? I should ask her about it. And I was trying to do anything to procrastinate asking for the real thing, right? Which is, which is a scary thing to ask someone to put your book, the book you've written into a library. So I was like, let me ask her something else. And if she says no to that, then I can ask her about this. So we're talking about um, my journey and me coming back and what I'm doing. And I casually ask her, I'm like, I'm trying to like paint somewhere. Um, happy to like donate a mural to the school. Can I actually use one of the walls in there? And I thought she would say, okay, yeah, like here's this like little obscure wall no one will look at. And you can paint this like one six by six portion of it. Um, but she says, yeah, you want to paint? Okay, let me show you something. And she shows me this 24 foot by nine foot wall that is inside the building, right? It's where every kid walking by the school, going to their class will look at. And she says, do you want to paint this wall? And I must have been possessed, right? Because I remember saying yes, but I don't remember saying yes. <laughs> like, why did I say yes? I have a fear of heights. How is it going to reach nine feet? I'm only five something. And I've never put a brush onto a wall before. In fact, I don't even like canvas painting. So what was I going to do? But I thought it might be fun and I really didn't want to do the work I wanted to do. So I said yes. And in two weeks, we had made this mural um, and I got to take nice pictures with it back in the day. And this was right before the pandemic started too. So actually it turned out to be a good thing. Um, and it became a portfolio piece. Didn't even plan for it. I didn't come back to the muralist, right? So this just like blows my mind. And then I got to do a commercial mural. This is for Baker Ninja on TDK Road in our pet. Amazing macrons, you should try them. Uh, shameless plug. But and I got that job and then I got a residential mural. And I know this looks a little bit uh, naked and weird to you, but this is actually a giant coloring wall, okay? They have kids. And so we got chalkboard paint and we made the entire wall is something they can color in. So we have like little doodles going on here and there where they can get chalk and actually color in. And I also got to paint seven different walls for a movie that's releasing in July. All because I thought, I don't wanna ask this question that I want to ask and I'm gonna do something else. So my tip for you here, um, and I cannot share the ones from the movie because it hasn't released yet. But my tip for you here is um, have fun. The task that you are procrastinating on, instead of sitting there like really numb and thinking, oh my God, I'm so bad. Like, why am I doing this? I shouldn't be procrastinating. I could be on that Forbes list. Forget all of that. And just say, whatever I'm doing now, I'm going to do it intentionally. And I'm going to do it in a way that I can have fun, right? So enjoy the time that you're procrastinating and you never know what kind of work it's going to bring. That's tip number two, okay? Now, um, you've decided you want to let procrastination happen. You've decided you want it to be fun, but it has to result in something for you, right? And so let me talk about this other project, which is me procrastinating with my favorite beverage in the whole wide world, coffee. 
So I, um, and this is back in 2018, so we're going back chronologically here. Um, back in 2018, I went to Australia. Um, I'd had a really terrible year in the beginning of the year, so I wanted to kind of travel and get that out of my system. So I went to Australia and um, I needed to pack. Okay, so we finished our entire um, trip. We went to Sydney and Melbourne and Keynes. We were in Melbourne and we needed to pack uh, in for the flight in like three hours. And um, after laundry, packing is the one thing I hate the most. Absolutely hate it. Like, why do things have to go back into a suitcase? Like, let me just leave it there and start a whole new life in a whole new world, right? So I'm in um, Australia, uh, in Melbourne. I'm trying to procrastinate on the backing part of it. So I decide I'm going to check out cafes in this neighborhood. This seems like a good time to do it. I have three hours till my flight. I need one hour to get to the airport. Um, I only need like 10 minutes to pack. It's fine. So I'm going to go out and have fun and have coffee. So I go out, I get this cup of coffee and I'm walking across a um, street filled with graffiti. And I think, how beautiful is this typographic logo? And I'm a lettering artist, so I should be appreciating letters out there. So how am I going to, like, how beautiful does this look? So minimal, so clean, so beautiful. Um, and then my ego from inside, like my artist ego is like tapping me on the shoulder and saying, hey, yeah, what? I think you could do a better job. I think you could do this logo. And I'm just like, well, let me try it, right? So I was thinking, I'm a lettering artist, right? So this should be of value to me if I'm able to do the same thing or something better. And so I decided to do the same thing, right? Uh, and I put it up on Instagram and I love naming things. So I called it copying coffee cups. So this is gonna combine my, um, my um, interests of coffee, of type and travel. And I wanted to see how far I could take it. I was only doing these when I didn't wanna pack. So every trip that I went on, uh, on the last days when I would do this. There's never been any time when I could go on the first day and be like, oh, I'm going to do coffee, copy and coffee cups today. I would do it on the last minute, but that was fine um, because I got so much good information from it. So this was back in New York, uh, on actually on the day that I left New York to come back to, um, to Chennai. So do with that what you will. So this is from um, Turkey. And this one, right, every coffee lover's dream, I got the coffee for free because if I was so impressed that I'm running the cafe, he was so impressed with how I did the sketch. He actually got my coffee for free. And this is the dream. Okay, this is when I do this, I'm going to quit everything else and, and uh, tell you. And I go off Instagram maybe. This was back in Puerto Rico. This was in Peru. So, as you can see, I travel a lot, right? But this was such a neat way for me to uh, journal. This was in Africa and Tanzania. This was in Sri Lanka just last year. Yeah, beginning of 2020. And this was uh, in Bombay. So, as you can see, this is um, right now a hobby, but I'm picking things that might make sense for my career later on, right? So I'm picking things that might add value. Who knows, maybe someday I'll get to do a collaboration with one of the coffee shops here um, and get paid for it, you know, get paid for drinking coffee. How awesome would that be? But it has to start with something um, that has value, right? And that's where if you worked in corporate or um, have attended any productivity seminar, you've seen this stupid matrix. Okay, it's called the Eisenhower matrix. Stupid because it's very annoying to see that you're not doing the work you're doing, right? Um, but it's a very brilliant matrix because it lets you look at things uh, in a different way. It says plot the graph and figure out what's urgent, what's important, what's not urgent, what's not important. So the quadrant one where it needs to get done, that is the project that you all are procrastinating on, right? So that's the project that needs to get done. But instead of doing that, you're going and doing other things. Where procrastination fails is if the task you are procrastinating with falls under quadrant four. If you are just doing instant gratification things, if you're just doing things without um, being mindful about it, if you're just um, taking a nap or like going out when you don't need to, like take a nap when you need the rest, right? But if you're taking a nap because you're procrastinating on the work that needs to get done, that's just doing it for the sake of, and that's where that instant gratification black hole happens. Um, what you want to do, if you want to become a better procrastinator, if you want to become a more productive procrastinator, if you want to be a more disciplined procrastinator, is you have to move your way through these quadrants. You have to go from Q4 to Q3. So this is the has to get done, which is you're busy all the time, but you're not being productive. You're just doing things that need to get done, but they're actually not adding any value to your um, business or your career or your life. And from there, you want to go to the things that are nice to get done, the things that you would like to do if you had time. You remember that list? You put it somewhere on your iPhone and then like um, put it away and never looked at it. Bring that list up, right? So procrastination is just a lot of time. So if you can use that time to do the things that would be nice to get done if you had time, if you marry those two together, 
how awesome would that be? And that is pretty much what my um, coffee cups thing is. And like I said, not monetizing it now, but you never know where it's going to be. It's still a cool thing for me to share with other people to show what an amazing artist I am, right? So you want to focus on tasks that will actually give you a lot more value um, instead of doing things that don't add any value to your life or your career or your business. So that's tip number three. And um, I want to go to this last one here which I know is probably the only thing that most people wanted from this talk is uh, how I wrote a book in 30 days. And the one that I have there is an actual physical uh, copy of the book. Uh, it's called Weekend in the Woods. It is available on Amazon if you want to uh, check it out. And this has 35,000 words. I didn't have a plot or anything when I started uh, this book. And um, I wrote 35,000 words in 30 days. So this was in one month in November. And I did it with the help of my Instagram following. Now, back in the day, I didn't have a lot, uh, a bigger following. It was about 800 people. Four of them were my friends. So it's not like I had a lot of people around me. It's that I had people around me, right? So um, the way this started was because I wanted to, um, the way this started was because I wanted to write a book before I turned 30. Two things I wanted to do before I turned 30. One was to get on the Forbes list, which obviously didn't happen. So now I'm shooting for 40 under 40. But the second thing was to become an author. I'd always read books, um, especially detective books when I had been growing up. I'd like even written little chapters of things that don't make sense. Um, and, you know, so I, I thought, okay, I want to write a book. It has to be fiction. It has to be mystery or thriller. There has to be death in there. It has to be a murder. Someone has to solve it. And I want to do this before I'm 30. And um, one good way, and this is my fourth step for you, remember this, and I'll call this um, back out when I'm done with the story, is you take a fun thing, right? For any awesome project to happen, you need four things, I believe. One is you need a fun thing. You have to have fun when you're doing this. You have to have a time limit because if there is no deadline, you cannot have last minute. So you want to have um, a time limit. You want to have accountability. You want to raise the stakes, right? When you tell people you're going to do something and you don't do it, you're going to look really stupid and that guilt in itself is going to make you do stuff. And the fourth thing, obviously, coffee. Like, how does the world run without coffee, right? So you have these four things you can make um, the most out of any project you're on. Now, for me, writing is a very fun thing to do. I love writing, right? So I had the fun thing with me. I always have coffee with me. So there's never a question of no coffee. And I had a deadline. I was going to turn 30 soon. I wanted to be an author by 30. The only thing I was missing was that accountability bit, right? I didn't have enough stake. Um, only I knew that I wanted to become a... Um, an author. So if only I knew and I didn't do it and I was okay with it, it was never going to happen. So I decided, okay, let me find this missing piece. Let me take this like thing that I only do when I procrastinate and add some accountability to it and see how that works. Right. So that is where my help me tell a story challenge came in. Now I was on Instagram and I've been running these challenges. Uh, these are daily challenges that I put out for my followers. Every month has the theme. Like one month was guessing the place from an emoji. Uh, another month was unscrambling all but one letter uh, and a bunch of other ones. I've been doing this for two years now. And this month we're actually playing the Netflix challenge, which is you guessing the name of the TV show from uh, the emojis that are on there. So if you want to play, find me on Instagram and um, you'll be able to play this as well. So I was doing this challenge, right? So it was a monthly theme. Every day my followers were interacting with me, um, sending me something. So I thought, what if I raise the stakes now? What if I told these people on Instagram, listen, I'm going to write a story. November's challenge is going to be help me tell a story. I need you guys to help me tell the story. I didn't have a story, okay? Like I didn't know what I was writing about, but I just wanted to write something. And I said, I'm going to turn 30. I want to write a book. You guys are going to help me. So what we did was we took this, well, I took this format for challenges. And I said, okay, you guys are going to help me write the story. The way it's going to work is every day I'm going to write a chapter. Okay, I'm going to write a chapter and you don't have to read everything in there. Okay, like this, a lot of editing has happened since then. So this is a little bit of garbage on here. But just to give you an idea, I said every day I was going to write a chapter, at least a thousand word chapter. And um, I actually wrote this on my phone. Okay, what you see on the screen there, that is from the notes app on the iPhone. Because if I sat down with my laptop to write it, I would not do it. It felt like a project project, you know, so I would procrastinate on it. So I said, okay, let's just say, we're just in bed. We just woke up. We're going to write it on our phone. That is literally how I wrote all 35,000 words. So I started writing on my phone. I would write one chapter and it would be at least a thousand words. I would check it on word counter before I posted it. And then I would post just one portion of it. I would post a hundred word snippet of it on my stories. And then I would, I would not tell people how the ch chapter ends. Okay. That's not as one. I would give them two options with two sentences for how the next chapter should be. 
So I would give them, like they have partial context, right? Because they've read like a hundred word snippet of the story. They don't necessarily know how that chapter ends, but they go on to the next one and they look at these two sentences and they look at it and say, okay, how do I want the next chapter to begin? And they vote on it. Next morning, I wake up, I look at which has gotten the most votes, literally take that sentence as the first sentence and start writing that next chapter. Again, thousand words, again, share a hundred word snippet, again, give them an option to go to the next one and again, let them pick. Now, for me, um, one was the accountability. I said 7 a.m. my time in New York, because I was back in New York at the time, 7 a.m. my time, I'm going to put this snippet out there. And after like three or four days, you wouldn't imagine, like if it was 7 5, there would be 10 DMs out of just the 800 people, mind you. 10 DMs that would say, hey, where's the chapter? I've been waiting for it. I have to head to the gym soon. Like you have to send me so I can read it, vote it, and then go to the gym. And when 10 people are asking you why you haven't submitted something, that is a different level of panic. Okay? So for me, trying to write the story at like six in the morning, I was naturally waking up at 4.30. I would wake up at 4.30, wash my face, get into the mood, like play some background music. I actually used the theme from Villa 2 uh, as my background music to get into the mood. And I would just start writing. It was so easy. It was flowing because it was fun, right? The first thing you're doing as part of this activity is looking at what sentence got the most votes. And then you're already in the mood, you're thinking about the story and you're writing the rest of it. And you know you have to finish it before seven because people are going to be waiting. Did this every single day, even um, when I was at a wedding, even when I was sick, even when I wasn't feeling great, even when something was happening in my personal life. Because again, accountability, people are waiting. I have to get this done. There's a, a deadline to it, a false deadline to it that seems to be working, right? So every day in November, um, 29 chapters, 35,000 words, we did this for all 30 days. And at the end of it, um, got a friend to edit it for me, got another friend to do the artwork for me. But at the end of it, uh, the next year, Feb 14, because Valentine's Day is a wonderful day to release a murder novel, uh, we released this on Amazon. Uh, it's still out there and there were more than 100 people. There's actually a print version and an ebook version if you are um, interested in checking it out. But this is like back in 2019, February. Yeah, so it's been a while. Um, and I actually said thank you to all the people that voted in there. About 100, 102 people had participated in the challenge. And the first page of my book actually has all the Instagram handles of the people that helped me get there because without them, the story would not have been possible. So the tip that I'm trying to um, give to you, I guess, is the fact that um, if you let procrastination happen, right? I know I was procrastinating by writing. That's okay. If you have fun with it, writing is a lot of fun for me. So pick something that's fun for you. If you um, pick something that is of value to you, that's going to be important to you, that's going to help you progress further in anything that you want to do. That's what this did for me, right? Like I became an author because of this one fun thing that I was doing. And you add accountability in there. You can turn that guilt you have with your procrastination into just a pot of gold. Like this is now opening up um, conversations for me with like script writing teams. I'm able to show this as a portfolio piece. Someone told me the other day to say, can I buy your script? Can you send me a copy of this? None of these would have been possible if I had just thought, oh, I shouldn't procrastinate. I want to write. It's fine. I'm going to go to my tech job. I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to be CEO school day. Don't do that, right? So something that's worked for me is just embracing all the weirdness in me. I love coffee. All right, fine. I love coffee. So what? I procrastinate a lot. I don't focus. So what? Like, what can I do with it? That is actually going to help me be the best version of myself and still do something with my life rather than try to follow this path that everyone takes. I mean, if that was what I was going to do, why am I sitting here in Chennai after, you know, like quitting a job that paid me a lot of money to basically do something I already knew, right? So if you're going to take the path away from everybody else, which is how you are creative, right? Like we're all doing something different from other people in our lives. We all have different perspectives. Um, how do we channel that? How do we fully lean in and embrace it and say, all right, I procrastinate. So what? What can I do with it? Um, and just figure out a way to be more productive with that um, than just go for that instant gratification. I think there is so much you can do uh, with this concept and with how well or like how uh, better you can um, do the tasks when you're procrastinating. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. And if you do like procrastination, um, and if you like the exercise we played uh, in the beginning, I just want to tell you that I made the ultimate procrastination tool uh, with my friend Vena. Okay. And this is uh, what someone had sent in the text before. It's called place cards. Okay. And this is the ultimate procrastination tool because it is a set of cards with different prompts in them um, where you just take a card wherever you are. Okay. It works indoors, outdoors, outer space, deeper spiritual plane, doesn't matter. Wherever you are, you can take this card, you look around for things that are completely different. Um, 
uh, in a different way, a different perspective and tick off the things that you find. So it's like people watching plus treasure hunting, whatever you are, and you can trick your brain into thinking this is actually a creative exercise, right? Because you're looking at for things that are um, not usually what they seem and you're trying to fill a whole card. So each one has 12 different items in there and a little challenge for you to do. So you exist in the real world and you're spending time in the real world. You're getting all this input to your brain and hopefully someday that helps you um, go do something something else much nicer, much better uh, and be the best version of yourself. Okay, so I know we're kind of at the end of this event. So I just want to end this by saying uh, just for the Creative Morning people, uh, if you do want to get place cards, we have a 15% off right now for just the people here. You can use the code creative on the site uh, and maybe we'll send out an email to everyone with the link uh, where you can get it. But also want to say on a Sunday morning, sitting and listening to somebody talk on uh, Zoom for over an hour now, um, I think is incredible. And I am so excited to speak to a lot more of you and get to know you and see uh, the different ways that you're creative and find my own inspiration. So yeah, so thank you so much. And hopefully um, your hearts are full and you're inspired a little bit and your tummies are filled with coffee. Um, but yeah, I think we can go on to question and answer, Sandeep, if you think that's already. <laughs>